All right, guys, it is Wednesday, October 10th. We've got a bunch of stuff to do today. One of the things I'm hoping to get to is get started on our Simple Little Life Build Along Knife. A lot of you guys are making amazing progress on this blade. Really, really cool to see. Also, I need to fix my milling machine. If we kind of come in here, I was, I, was, I was making something last night, and I'm not gonna tell you what I was building because it's, it's a bit of a secret. Um, if it works, it's gonna be cool, and I'll do a video about it, like, like just kind of showing it. But I was hogging material down so hard that I blew my little fuse here, so I need to jump on the phone, see if I can't find that fuse somewhere. And then I've got a whole bunch of other knives I'm working on. I've got this big, huge chopper, very similar to the chopper that I built previously. Uh, this is a custom order, this is CPM 154. And it's actually gonna get a matching little camp knife as well. And the gentleman that wants this would like it carried in a sheath together somehow. It's gonna be heavy. Not sure how I'm gonna combine the two, but we'll see what we can do. I'm uh, just kind of roughing out some lines for my fuller. So I'm really hoping to get a lot of grinding on that done today. First, I need to drill my holes, make sure I've got my pin locations sorted out. I like to have that done before grinding. You might as well scratch up all the places that you have to grind off anyways when you're drilling it. So we'll get that marked out first, and then we'll get to our grinding. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good day. Also, check that out. This is our second snowfall of the year. It's October 10th and we've had two snowfalls. Last Tuesday, Wednesday, we had snow. We had about four inches. It all melted. It was completely gone. And then the last two days we've got, I don't know, we only have like maybe two and a half inches right now, but it seems a little too early for snow. You know, I don't like to keep it too hot in here. Cause then when I'm working, it gets really hot. But when I'm like designing and laying things out, I get cold. So I'm like always taking a sweater on, putting a sweater off. Um, I like to keep it a little bit cooler. Also check this out. This is the bummer with the winter time. Back to this season. Like it came in here and this was just like caked with ice. Put the winter tires on. And it's just like, ugh. But I would suspect within a day, Oh, hello, fluffy pants. Hi, Dad. Hey, dude. Hi, Dad. What are you doing? Chores? Yeah. Right on. I'm just vlogging. Oh, is it my pajamas? That's okay. I suspect within like three days, this will all be gone. But for right now, we've got full on winter time. I'll show you two little knives I'm working on real quick. These are some Pocket Pal 2s, and I haven't done these for a while. So these are them. I like small EDC blades. I'm not sure why. I've put a satin finish on these in my vibratory tumbler, and I really like that. Let's see if we can get in the light here so you can see a bit better the finish. So you still have some very slight, slight grind marks. I took that up with a Trizac belt, but then it's also just kind of got that matte look to it, like a factory knife almost. Really like those. So we're gonna get this stuff cut up, get these glued up, and then we'll get on to uh, doing some work with this here. I wanna get this stuff done first so that I can allow these scales to dry up, set up, you know, when you're doing scales, it's a slow process. You know, you've got to glue the materials together, then you have to actually glue them to the knife itself. Usually in the mornings, if I've got scales to set up or glue on, I like to do that in the morning because then I can do other stuff while that's drying. And, uh, you know, it'll, each little step, you kind of glue, go do other stuff, glue, glue, go do other stuff, and then you can kind of finally come back when everything's dry and grind it all. But we're not there yet. Should be done on these. I love using this parchment paper because the epoxy does not stick to it. Even if you get little chunks of it. So you've got a couple of chunks on it there. Give one of these flicks. Boom, look at that. Comes off there like nothing else. Parchment paper works like a champ. These are good. I'm actually gonna let these cure a little bit more. Uh, I could probably start grinding them. This is just a five minute epoxy. But seeing as I'm not in a rush, I'm just gonna leave these off of here. I'll go ahead and clamp the Kyo Prime ones down and then we'll, uh, uh, maybe after lunch, we'll get to grinding these out. Also, I was looking in the video, the build video I did for the last chopper and I ended up grinding it before I drilled my holes. 
but I don't want to do that this time. I may as well get this done. And before I get too carried away with any of that stuff, I need to trace this out because the last time I made the video, I took a picture. Uh, since then I got a new phone and I lost that picture, so I really didn't have any template to go off of. And while this probably looks very, very similar to the last one I did, this is just my iteration of it again. I had to redraw it from scratch. So I'm going to trace this out because I really like the shape of it, the profile, it feels great, it swings great. And if I ever have to make another one of these, I'd rather not be guessing or redrawing it. It's nice to just template this. So. All right, so we've got this, we've got our holes drilled out. And now what we're gonna do is put in our thumb jimping. Uh, we'll put the thumb jimping in there, a little bit of the back, right here like we had done last time. A lot of people ask what coarseness I use. This is a, I can't see it. I think it's a double zero, it's a 20 tooth per inch. And uh, chalk it up, helps keep it clean. Using my Bill Banky file guide. I've got a tool time Tuesday on this, as well as on the checkering file. And uh, we're just gonna come in here, start laying out our thumb jimping. Ooh man, this stuff cuts really nice in this CPM 154. That's one thing I notice a lot as I'm working with different steels. A lot of these stainlesses machine much smoother, much cleaner than some of the high carbon steels, especially like the old one, which is what I primarily work with. Uh, for high carbon steels. I just like 01 tool steel. Kind of what I've always used. But these stainless steels, like it, it's a way smoother cut. It doesn't grab near as much. I did some jimping previously, just a few days ago, on these knives here. These are 01 tool steel. Put this jump, this jimping in right there. And uh, when you're doing this, like, and it, I find carbon steels, that's, that's just how they are. But this uh, this stuff works really well. I don't know if I've ever added jimping to a uh, 154, or sorry, CPM 154 before. But this is a nice, nice, smooth cut. It's always interesting working with different steels, how they machine. These drill a lot cleaner than carbon steels. A lot of the stainless ones like Nitro V, uh, 440C, not quite as much, but like Nitro V, the CPM 154, super clean when you're drilling it. It's kind of interesting the way all that stuff works. I don't want to get too aggressive. I don't want, you know, if you went all the way so you bottom out the teeth, it's almost rough on your fingers and I'm not, I'm not trying for that. But I certainly want some decent grip there. And then also I want to make sure as I clean this up, you know, I do my finish grinds. I'm going to be taking a little bit of that away. So I want to make sure I have enough of that left there, but. That's perfect. I like that. All right, so now what I wanna do, I'm gonna add my jimping to the back, but I wanna make sure it is centered. So, ba -ba 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 -ba, let's see what we got here. I had to turn my light on, because it was a little dark. Oh good, so this is pretty much exactly inch and a half. So we will go three quarter. That'll be our center. How wide is this file? Three quarter. That makes it easy. Put this at three eighths, between there and there. One thing I'm curious about is if there's any way I can use this file guide in this awkward position. Oh snap, look at that. I like that. And that one there, that's pretty much purely for decoration. This is obviously useful when you choke up, if you're doing slightly finer work. Nice to have a little traction for your thumb there. This, I don't know, maybe if you're gonna use this for beating on stuff, it'll give it a little bit of non-sliptivity. But uh, I think that looks pretty good. Beauty. 
All right, got my small wheels on here. One, two, three block to help me out. Let's grind into full or two. Got our fuller roughed in on both sides looks pretty snazzy and I uh, put my file guide on here so what I'm gonna do now is I'll rough in my flat grinds and I'm gonna go to about 50 thousandths of an inch edge thickness once I'm there I'll switch up to the rotary platen we'll start convexing it and um, one thing I had also done since I was set up for doing the fullers I went ahead and did a fuller on this little guy here and I've actually hand sanded this one in on both sides I'm gonna hand sand the big one once I get the hand sanding the rest of the blade but uh, yeah, let's go ahead, we'll put a really aggressive belt, a 36 grit belt, and we'll start grinding in our flats. This is all gonna be freehand, which I really enjoy, especially when you've got this much material to work with. Like this is quarter inch thick, so this is gonna be fantastic, and uh, the CPM 154 grinds beautifully, nice and clean. Um, I love grinding these things in. So, let's get grinding. Oh, before we do that, my good wife, she picked me up a bag of these fuses, 22 cents each. So these are fuses for my milling machine, Pop that sucker in there. <laughs> Sweet. Pretty stoked to have that. I also got five of those fuses, so if that happens again. Uh, what I was doing is I'm actually, I'm working on a project. I'll tell you about it later, but I was doing some heavy, heavy cutting, and I was just taxing this poor little milling machine of mine, and it blew a fuse. So anyways, we've got four more. We're ready, and uh, let's get grinding. See that little thingy from my file guide fell into my grinding bucket. How does that happen? Yeah, look at that. That is nasty. What I don't understand is how that could fall out. Need to tighten that up a little more, I guess. There we go. Didn't quite have it tweaked enough. <laughs> that is so gross in there. Back to grinding. This thing roughed in at 36 grit. It's still fairly coarse. I need to shut this video down right here because I've got to go inside and do a draw. Uh, I'm giving away a last ditch necker on Instagram. Uh, if you don't follow along there, check it out. There's so much to be learned on Instagram. And I try to interact a lot more there just because it's easier with the app and stuff. Tomorrow what we'll do is we'll come in and smooth these out a little bit because this is a 36 grit, very coarse. It looks kind of cool right now, but not on a finished knife. So I'm going to take this up to probably 220, still grinding it flat. And then once we've done that, I will switch over to the rotary platen and we'll put an ever so slightly convexed edge on here. My favorite part about knife making is grinding, especially freehand grinding. There's just something about it. And uh, you know, I would encourage you guys, if you're having troubles with your grinding, um, first of all, thicker blades like this are easier. Obviously there's a lot more grinding involved, but you can make a lot of mistakes along the way and you still have plenty of material to correct those with. 
This was a bit of a tricky grind because this blade actually gets fatter towards the edge. It's a quarter inch narrower here than it is right here, but I wanted my top grind line to match my fuller. I want it to be nice and parallel. So this grind, as I explained in my other chopper video, it actually starts out like this and it actually kind of flattens out as it gets towards the tip. So the way that I achieved that, is I would kind of start and kind of set this angle here, get this so it's pretty much where I wanted to, taking this whole thing down, and then I can kind of climb this one up a little bit and start blending them together. So essentially we had a smaller grind going all the way down, and it was only going to about here, and then I can start rotating this, kind of flattening it out up here, and then just back and forth, bring it all together, and uh, get some nice, pretty darn straight grind lines up there. Again, I haven't gone all the way up to my marks yet, not sure if it shows up or not, but I still have a couple of marks. I, I still need to climb it up a little bit higher to where I had laid out the lines. Uh, but again, I can do that once I'm at a higher grit. That way we'll be ready and it's not like I'm going to have all these deep scratches in there when I try to finish out this blade. Anyways guys, got this done. Tomorrow I'll hopefully get onto this as well. And I didn't get any work done on the Simple Little Life Build Along uh, knife. Hopefully we can get that done tomorrow. Uh, get started on it at least, but uh, this is a lot of fun. Also, I know I've done a video on the chopper before. I've vlogged building a chopper. Uh, this one's actually slightly longer than the last one. And I also did a full build video on a chopper, but it's just been a while since I've had the cameras rolling, you know, just kind of filming the day in the shop here. And I just thought I'd share this with you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully you learned something. If you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. And as always guys, I thank you so much for watching. Cheers. I did it, I actually did a vlog. Oh.